Hello Pisces and welcome to your in-depth monthly horoscope for April for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you some standout details to look out for, but please stay with me. I will then explore much deeper all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. Now last month, the planet that governs time, Saturn, arrived in your sign. Saturn has quite the reputation, but actually has a very constructive impact in the first week, but also the last eight days of this month. So I can't wait to tell you about that. But also your second solar house, which is very much to do with how we feel about our self-worth, and can be to do with everyday money, that's blessed by the energies of Jupiter coming into an alliance with the Sun on the 11th. This is really important, so I need to tell you about that. There's a lot of electric energy this month, so your ideas uh, zone is really lit up positively. And if you are a returning visitor to my channel, thank you so much for joining me once more. If you're new here, it's great to have you with us. This is very much a community. Please share any thoughts you have. I do interact with all comments and please subscribe too. Now, if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data of time, date and place of birth, I can give you a life roadmap report which can really help you to understand some of the patterns that have played out throughout your life and get a much more intimate understanding, the more challenging ones but also the ones that present opportunities. Understanding those patterns is a lot to do with how we can take more control of our lives. And in my special package, you can also get your 12 month personal forecast and there's 30% off. If you don't know your time, I have designed a new set of charts which can work with that. We don't use the ascendant and we use whole sign astrology, but based on the sun. And this will help you to reflect in my videos in a very, very positive way. Again, there's 30% off if you have the analysis and the forecast. Please see below for more on that too. So Pisces, as you begin this month, so the Sun, Mercury and Jupiter are all in your second house. The second house, as I mentioned, very much to do with life's foundations, can be to do with those ins and outs in our daily budget. But Mercury is going to be moving quite soon on the third into your third house. And this is going to see a speed and up of energy. But just before then, the conjunction, which is when two planets, as we see it from Earth, are side by side between Venus and Uranus, could bring about something really exciting. It may be that a text message or an email or a connection with someone can happen very swiftly and very unexpectedly, but can bring a sense of uplift. But also, as Mercury moves into the sign of Taurus, it does clash with Pluto, now having positioned just in your 12th house. It's possible, therefore, that you could also have some kind of uh, information come to you that could be a little bit unsettling. I feel after the early bright start, there may be a couple of days when it's important not to get too caught up in anyone else's perspective and certainly uh, not listen to any gossip that might be doing the rounds. But like I hinted before, Saturn in the first week of this month forges a very stable link to Mars. Mars was in that extended journey through your fourth house from August the 20th to the 25th of March last month and that was draining at times. Now it's much more energised, it's much more vibrant and much more demonstrative and Mars is obviously about action and it's about thrust so I feel that you are going to feel more outgoing this month but it's linked with Saturn in that first week, suggests that anything you're starting new has a great chance of really becoming something more uh, lasting because the drive of Mars is, is also supported by the stability and thoroughness that Saturn brings too. 
Now on the 6th we do have a full moon. The Libra and full moon is the annual opportunity to think about our relationships, which is what the sun in Libra is about. So the moon here for you suggests where you're most deeply connected to other people. So this can be in a close personal relationship, friendships, family, or even a business partnership. But because Uranus is in your third house of everyday thoughts, that's in quite a disrupting link. So if there is some issue to do with shared finances or your approach to handling money doesn't quite um, doesn't quite blend in with someone else you're having to deal with you may have to be a little bit more outspoken in order to assert your position but from that point in the month from the 6th through to the 11th the Sun and Jupiter are moving to the climax of the 11th when they become exactly conjunct in astrology, this is probably one of the most traditionally fortunate of influences. Jupiter is known in traditional astrology as the greater benefit. The sun in the second house is quite sensual. So this would be a really good time to perhaps treat yourself to something nice if you can afford it. But also, it's possible that if you have been on something of a diet, uh, perhaps since the turn of the year, uh, your desire to have some calorific goodies could be amped up a little bit over the following week, but it's a great time to enjoy a really lovely meal with a friend or a glass of wine or to celebrate the good things in life which give you pleasure. If you're a, a, a maker or a crafter, you can really be productive in this second week of the month. But what about money? The reason I'm being a little bit cautious about this is that traditionally the Sun conjunct Jupiter in the second house could bring some kind of financial uh, fortune. But of course, we're all experiencing quite the crunch when it comes to an increase in costs. So I wouldn't say it's not possible, but I don't want to be frivolous about how I'm describing this. If you do have resources, I would say that you possibly could be quite proactive about how you use them but remember Jupiter can also see us be a little bit overconfident so I feel that you could have something emerge that does give you some uplift but I wouldn't like to over egg what that uplift could be however on the 11th when the Sun and Jupiter do become exact Venus moves from your third house and into the sign of Gemini. If you are wanting to spend some money on decoration or making your home that much more comfortable with some new furnishings or improving your outdoor space, this is a lovely time to go for it. It's possible with Pluto in the mix that someone uh, could let you know, and it could be someone in your family, about how much you mean to them, or perhaps you can have that heartfelt connection to someone around a close emotional relationship. Ironically, from the 11th through to the 17th, Venus is actually challenged by Saturn in your sign. So as much as Pluto can help you to understand the more psychological side of your relationships, if you're feeling that someone doesn't quite give back to you what you want in a relationship, Saturn could, particularly if you're born very early in Pisces, see you think quite coolly about this tie. So perhaps what Pluto does in its interaction with Saturn in that semi-sextile is help you to cut through and see the relationships that are truly valuable and perhaps be a little bit more conscious who perhaps is not quite so aligned. But the 16th through to the 24th sees Mercury, despite it having entered its pre-shadow period on the 7th, it is in a conjunction with Uranus. During this period of time, your ideas sector is absolutely buzzing. If you're someone who really enjoys technology or gadgets, or you're wanting to get a new car, or perhaps even uh, a new bike, 
the chances are that you're going to be exploring all the information around these things with a lot of excitement. There also can be some unexpected exchanges and a lot of activity in terms of text messages or social media in general. But the 20th sees a solar eclipse in Aries, but it really is in the last minutes of the sign. Whereas the first uh, new moon, which occurred a month before was just after the sun had moved into Aries. So to have these two new moon lunations, the second one, a solar eclipse, is very rare. And this is giving you a big boost in terms of valuing what's very special about you. So self-worth is just as important as the amount of money that we have in our situation. But this one is squaring up to Pluto. So because it's so late, it's almost like a second, third house eclipse. And the sun does in fact move into Taurus later on the 20th. So I feel that there's going to be a picking up of energy and your mind can be working quicker, but I wouldn't be too rash about splashing out on anything that you haven't done uh, very careful due diligence on. But on the 21st, Mercury does go into that retrograde. Now, we all know that Mercury retrograde in the third house, when Uranus is around, is likely to see some energy being directed towards things like um, technology. So it could be that there's going to be an upgrade or something that you've relied upon in terms of a domestic appliance that could need some servicing or some attention. Perhaps something will make way. That can happen. But Mercury in the third house is about how we think. It's about our ideas and how we express them. So there's an opportunity with the retrograde to check out that some of your belief systems are up to date, relevant, and actually that you're connecting with people around you efficiently, whether it's people in your community, whether it's your siblings, or whether you're articulating your ideas clearly or just up to date on your digital correspondence or even ordinary correspondence so use that mercury retrograde to your advantage but in the last eight days saturn as i mentioned before links very productively but this time to the sun if your ideas are well thought through what a great opportunity this is to really bed something down that can be more substantive and longer lasting. But also Mars forges a dazzling alliance to Uranus. If you are single, some kind of invitation, unexpected uh, date or connection or meeting with someone can really be electric but very exciting so i feel that this is a month that does have the emphasis to begin with very much on resources on your self-worth on working your way into the month in terms of balancing the ins and outgoings in terms of of those uh, financial flows but later in the month there's a lot of electric energy now there may be times when you do feel a bit frazzled but i also feel there's enormous opportunity to interact with other people in a very exciting upbeat and epiphescent way and your bubbly personality which has been blunted i feel by saturn's journey through your 12th solar house over the last couple of years does get an opportunity to come out and play so expect a lot of fun and a lot of bright interaction later this month it's been a real pleasure being with you pisces if you would uh, comment or subscribe that would be lovely thank you